Hey everyone, let's edit this panoramic image in Lightroom. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to download this RAW file in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. All right, here we are in Lightroom. This is a panoramic image and I already have applied a little bit of cropping. You can see I took away quite a bit from the foreground since that's just not that interesting. Also, I tried to nicely frame that mountain in the center in the upper third part of the image and of course keep it centered like this. Now due to the fact that this is a panoramic image, there are a few kind of skewed lines. You can see it right there with the water horizon going slightly downwards and on the other side it's going slightly upwards. We will fix that later with a little bit of Photoshop, but for now let's focus on the Lightroom part. For this image I'm not changing the profile, also I'm not changing the white balance since overall I like how the colors look. What I do want to change is I do want to bring up the highlight and you can see looking at this we can safely do that without risking overexposure. So let's pump it up a little more just to bring in some more contrast to this image and for the same effect I'm going to bring down the shadows quite a lot. Now we're dealing with a little bit of underexposure. You can see that with that indicator right in the top left corner of the histogram. You can click on it to make it visible. And you can see it's just in those tiny areas. That means the underexposure is not that dramatic. But we can try to fix that by bringing up the blacks, which should help with those darkest parts. All right. And for some more contrast, I want to bring up the whites. Let's raise them just a little more. And again, we can see an indicator pop up in the top right corner, which shows us some overexposure right there in the sky. This area is a little bigger, but I think for this image, it's fine to work with a bit of overexposure like that. At this point, I'm still not quite happy with the contrast, so I want to bring that up as well, just giving the image some more punch. But I think we are good for now. What I also want to do is to add a little bit of texture, which will give all those smaller details some more sharpness. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity and the dehaze just to create an overall softer look for this image. Bringing down the dehaze will affect the brightness. So be aware and check the histogram if you don't want to have too much overexposure going on. All right, and at this point we could maybe add a little bit of vibrance, but overall I do want to keep the shot rather desaturated. So that's a pretty good starting point. So next up, let's also do a little bit of masking. Uh, what I want to do first is to make the top right part of the sky just slightly darker. For that reason, let's grab a linear gradient. And I mostly want to affect the right part like this. Maybe don't bring it down that much. And here I'm simply going to drop the exposure since I want the right part of the sky to be really, really dark and dramatic. Wonderful. Then I'm trying to target the mountain in the center using a radial gradient. I can do this pretty roughly like that. And what I want to do here is to introduce some more details. And for that reason, I'm just going to bring up the texture makes this mountain look much more interesting instantly. Then I want to use another radial gradient to create some kind of light beam effect. Therefore, I'm going to create a very wide and thin one. I'm going to slightly rotate it to fit the angle of the light. Now let's stretch it some more with the center right outside the image. And in here, I do want to bring up the blacks. And I'm going to bring down the clarity and drop the dehaze. So we can work on the position a little more. But I think this is looking really, really good. All right, now let's also work on the foreground. Since at the moment, this is kind of distracting with how bright things are down there. So I'm going to grab another linear gradient, and just drag it over the foreground like this and bring down the exposure just to darken it a bit. Perfect. And then I want to work on all the water in the center. 
for that let me try using a color range mask and just pick a color from right here this is selecting a little bit too much so what i want to do is i want to subtract using a linear gradient and just trying to remove all the unnecessary stuff from the top that's looking much better i'm also going to subtract a linear gradient right there from the foreground like this now with this mask what i want to do i do want to introduce a lot more clarity just to kind of make those waves in the water a little more visible which also gives some kind of sense of scale of the image then let's also make this area a little brighter by bringing up the exposure let's add some more contrast and bring up the whites and we could even play around with some more saturation giving this a nice blue color tone wonderful almost done with the masking stuff just a few more things let me create another linear gradient for the bottom right part since this is still very very bright again i'm just going to bring down the exposure to fix the brightness here and then i'm using a radial gradient for the left side since this is a bit too dark and I'm again making use of that subject button and I'm choosing a color range mask since I don't want the water to be affected. I'm just clicking in here. Perfect. And with that selection, let's bring up the exposure and maybe even the shadows. Perfect. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. So we went from this image to this one with just a bunch of masks. You can see the light situation is now much more interesting. So at this point, there's not much left to do, just a bit of color grading, I guess. So let's go ahead. Actually, no, let's do some more tone curve adjustments. We can improve the contrast some more. And for that, I guess, let me create a point for the highlights right there and just slightly bring it up. And I'm going to create a point for the shadows right there and slightly drop it. So it's a very basic S-curve, but, but what I want to do now is to grab the black point and just push it slightly upwards. And thus we are creating a faded blacks effect, which works quite nice on this shot. So let me deactivate the tone curve so, so you can actually see the difference from before to after. Just added a summer punch to this image. Very subtle, but I think it looks so much better. Now on to the color grading. I'm going in the HSL panel first and I just want to work on the saturation. That means I want to bring up the orange tones. I want to bring down the yellow tones because they are a bit too strong for my taste. And then let's raise aqua and blue. Since those are the main colors of the image, which makes everything more interesting. Perfect. Not going to touch the hue and the luminance, and I'm also not going to touch the split toning in the color grading panel. What I want to do is to go all the way down into the calibration tab and just raise the blue primary saturation. Okay, that looks great. Now, one thing I forgot to reset while recording this video is that vignetting effect I already have applied. You can see it's a tiny amount, so let me deactivate this effect. That's the image without vignetting, and here with that little bit of added vignetting. Then, one last thing I want to do in Lightroom, and that's the sharpening, of course, in the details tab. As always, we're going to bring down the radius, then increase the details, introduce some masking, so only the main subjects of the image will be sharpened, and now let's increase the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And here we have the final image after the Lightroom adjustments. So we went from this on the left side to the image on the right side. Pretty cool. Now about those skewed lines. Let's fix them using a little bit of Photoshop. I'm going to right click on the image, go to Edit In and use Photoshop. Fixing distorted lines like this is always a little bit tricky. So just in case we mess something up, let's duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. Now there are many ways to fix those lines. I want to show you two different ways for this shot. 
I'm going to hit Control T first to bring up the transformation settings and now right click in the image and choose Warp. Uh, to better fix those lines we actually want to create a guideline for that so I'm clicking on that ruler up here and just drag down a guideline. Let's place it somewhere here and with that guideline you can already see how this part is way too far down. Now with the warp tool active I can just click in the image and drag this part up. And thus we can nicely fix that line making it look a little more natural. Just be careful because dragging around this area will also have an effect on the rest of the image. So always keep that in mind. Once we're happy with that warp adjustments, just click that check icon up there. So I think the left side looks pretty good. For the right side, I want to do something else. And for that, let's grab the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select all the area I want to fix. Uh, maybe like that. And again, I'm hitting Control T and then right click and use skew. And while in the skew mode, we can simply click on that box and drag down the image until we get something that looks more natural. And since we have made a selection here, only the selected area will be affected. So the rest of the image will stay the same. Just like that. Now let's deselect, remove that guideline and you can see we went from this very, very distorted image to this version. Looks so much better. Of course, there is now a gap at the top. For this image, it's not that clearly visible. Still, I do want to fix that. So I'm going to use the lesser tool, create a rough selection around that gap. Hit Shift F5 and choose Content Aware to fill it. Done. So at this point, we are pretty much done. If you want, we could make this image a little more dramatic, I would say, by hitting Ctrl T, hold on the Shift key and just drag up the image, scaling up the mountains a little more. Okay. And here we have the final image. So I hope this Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, as always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.